All right, guys, so I left you with this example problem, and now we need to do the example problem together. So did you get the correct answers? And I know what you're going to tell me. You're going to say, well, I didn't do the problems because I didn't want to waste my time. I just clicked next on the next video to watch what these answers are going to be. Shame on you if that is what you did. And the reason is because you don't learn that way. You have to be able to struggle through these problems on your own. Break a sweat. Don't let other people do the work for you. Because if that's what you're doing, then that means you're probably not going to get very good grades on an upcoming test. And we don't want that to happen, do we? So I left you with four example problems. And here they are. A, B, C, D. And it says, give me the number of signals and talk about the multiplicity in each one. All right, so keep in mind, we are building our, and using our words. So we want to make sure that we use some proper terminology when we begin to explain what we're getting ready to describe. So CH3, CH2, 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 and CH3. All right, that's the structure that they gave us. So the first part of the question is, how many chemical shifts are there going to be, Mr. Tracy? And I'm going to go through the structure and I'm going to label those chemical shifts. All right, it's pretty easy, very symmetrical molecule. Look at this thing, right? So this is going to be, let's just ding dong there and ding dong there and ding dong there. And then look at this. Here is almost like a plane of symmetry that begins to happen. And now the fourth carbon in is actually a replica of the third carbon. And now the next to last carbon is a replica of what was kind of second in line. And now the ending carbon is the same as what we started with in the beginning. I can take that molecule. I can completely fold it in half on top of each other and they perfectly line up. So these are equivalent hydrogens that we see on the tail end of this molecule. So, as far as the first part of the question goes, we really only see three signals or three chemical shifts. That's what we're going to find in the NMR. All right, so the next part of the question says, now talk about the multiplicity. It doesn't even want me to label them. I started to do that here, but I'm just not going to do that because it doesn't actually tell me to do it. It doesn't say rank them. It doesn't say give them in order of lowest frequency first and then highest frequency, which is closer to the zero mark and then up and up and up and up. It doesn't say for me to do that. I can, and we probably will, but that's not part of this example problem, right? So we've talked about those in previous lectures. If you need a review of that, then go review it. But right now, it's just all about signals and then multiplicity or the splitting. All right, so if I look at this example problem, I look at this first one and I, do, 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 I go next door and I see two hydrogens that are present. So two plus one is going to be a triplet. So this is going to be a split of three different signals. And that's what I would see in that NMR cluster at that particular chemical shift. All right, next one, uh, we're going to go a second one in. And if I go to this second one in, then I'm going to... Here we have three. And then... Well, here we have two. And uh, three, and they are different. So three plus one is going to be a four. And then this one is a two. So that's a two plus one, which is a three. And I'm going to multiply those two values by each other because they amplify each other, right? We've got a lot of with the spins and not the spins and against and for and everything else. So we're going to see a lot of splitting that happens here. So 4 times 3 is 12, but here I just really call that a multiplet. So that is a multiplet signal that I see with carbon number 2. And then finally, this third signal that we're going to be getting this third signal, now be careful, because this is a signal, this is a different signal, that is a different signal. But here we start to repeat, and this is equivalent. Those are equivalent hydrogens right there. So one of those kind of key takeaway moments, 
was equivalent hydrogens do not split each other signals, right? Remember that? So because of that, I do not do, 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 go to that side. I just ignore that side. I pretend like that side's not even there because those are equivalent protons to what I have on the carbon and the protons that I'm trying to get the signal for. And because they are identical, I do not count them. They do not split each other at all. So the only do, 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 that I'm going to do is to the left, and these are two protons that are there. So two plus one is going to be a three. So that means that this thing will be a triplet. So I'm going to have three chemical shifts in this molecule. This molecule is an alkane. If I take a look at the number of carbons, it is hexane in particular. So with the alkane hexane, we're going to have three major chemical shifts. The first one having a triplet, the second one having a multiplet, and the third one having a triplet. Now, if it did tell me to rank them and order them, Okay, keep in mind, what we do is we look for exposure. How exposed are they? So the CH3 group fights against three buddies at the lunch table and hydrogen saying, not today, Carbon, you're not taking my lunch money. I'm going to keep everything that I've got. And Carbon kind of whimpers and it goes off on its little own corner and tries to take money from somebody else, maybe. I don't know. But because of that, that hydrogen has more lunch money because it's brought more buddies to the table. And because it brought more buddies to the table, we're going to see that one closest on the zero TMS mark or the one more upfield. So this one is definitely going to be A. So it didn't kind of tell us to do this, and that's where I'm going to stop because I don't want to make this video go forever and ever and ever. It will already go long enough, but it just asks for different signals and the multiplicity, and that's what we'll stick with. But we can go back. What we did before is rank them and figure out the order of them as we do them one at a time. All right, so now we're off to part B. And part B looks like it's an iodo at the beginning and a bromo at the end. And then we have get these three carbons that's in the middle. So we want to do the same thing here. We want to talk about splitting. And we also want to talk about just the actual number of signals that we're going to get from the molecule. So I CH2, and then we had another CH2, and then another CH2, and then a Br here. All right, so first we're going to ding-dong the molecule. So if I look at this molecule, I'm going to see this CH2 group, and I'm going to go ding-dong. I'm going to get a signal, and then this one's further away from iodine, and I'm going to go ding-dong. I'm going to get a signal, and then the next one's even further away from iodine, and I'm going to ding-dong. So we're going to get three different signals here. All three of those CH2s are different, and that's because they are further and further away from the iodo, or if I wanted to talk about it the other way, I could. They are further and further away from the bromine. It doesn't really matter. So the A or the BR, they are different. And because they are different and they're further away from those electronegative atoms, they are different signals. So here we're going to have a total of three major chemical shifts that happen in the NMR. Now they will split based on what their neighbors are doing. So now we want to talk about multiplicity here. What type of splitting are we going to see with this particular molecule? So if I take a look at the first one, I'm going to go next door and I see two kids with a mean mommy or a mean daddy. So that's going to be two plus one, which is going to be a total of three. And that means that this signal will become a triplet. I will see it broke up into three signals. The one on the other end, let's do that one because that will be just as easy. This particular one only has one neighbor. I see two mean kids and a mean mommy and a mean daddy. So two plus one is going to be a total of three. So that means that this one will also be a triplet that will be there. So now I've got to worry with this one here in the middle. And the one in the middle has two neighbors, one to the left and one to the right. So I go to the left and I see two of them and I go to the right and I see two more of them. So we already know that this is going to be a little more complicated and they are not equivalent to 
to each other, right? No, none of these signals are equivalent to each other. So that means I do have to treat them separately. So what that means, these hydrogens are not equivalent to the signal that I'm focused on. So they are different, so I count them. In addition to that, the CH2 group on the left and the CH2 group on the right, they are different from each other. So I do have to treat them as separate entities here. So that is a 2 plus 1, which is a 3. And that's another 2 plus 1, which is a 3. And then I take those values and I multiply them. So 3 times 3 is 9. It will split up into 9 signals. And then this we just simply call a multiplet. All right? We never really talked about the word of 9. I could use the prefix nona. I think we all know what nona means, just like octa and hepta and hexa and penta. But really, that's not what the textbook actually does. It just kind of stops it at four or five, and then it just says use multiply it for everything else. And that's what we did here. All right. Okay, so there's example B. I hope that you got that correctly when, or correct when you did it. Uh, so uh, if not, you would never know because you probably didn't even attempt it on your own before you started playing this video. And shame on you for doing that. Shame, shame. I've got eyes through the camera. I know what you're doing right now. So you better, you better behave yourself and you better go fix your hair because, you know, I'm secretly sitting here through your video camera right now on your computer and watching every move that you make and taking pictures of you too at the same time. All right, so let's take a look at... C and C is the CL with a CH2, 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 and then a CL there at the end. All right, so we're getting a little bit more symmetrical now. So similar to what we did before, but slightly different. So CL, and then it was CH2, and then CH2, and then CH2, and then CL. So the question tells me, you know, how many different signals are you going to get? And then how are they going to split when you do find them? All right, so let's ding dong the molecule. That's what we do first. So here on this example, ding dong, there's protons. I know that's going to give me a signal. And that is closest to the chlorine. And then I go one step further and I go one step in and I get further away from that chlorine. So ding dong, I'm going to get a signal that's there. And then if I go another step, what I actually have here is another plane of symmetry. This is a molecule that can overlap on itself. So this particular CH2 group is identical to that CH2 group. There's no difference here. That one is attached to a chlorine with a CH2 on one side. And this one's attached to a chlorine with a CH2 on the other side. Side. So equ equivalency is going to have a play here. And again, take a hydrogen off, put a bromine or something on it, name it to the left, and then do the same thing over on the right-hand side. You will see that you will end up with the same name. So plane of symmetries are very good here for NMR. I quickly just knew this by looking at the structure. I know we've got two major chemical shifts here. All right, so two major chemical shifts. Now the issue is how are these things going to uh, split? Uh, how do I describe the multiplicity of each one of these signals? And the first one, like all the other ones, have been pretty easy, right? They've got one neighbor. So I go next door. I see two kids with a mean mommy or a mean daddy. So two plus one is going to be a total of three. So this one will form a triplet for me, all right? And then if I take a look at this middle carbon, we have to do the multiplicity of that one as well. So if I look at this middle carbon, I see the one next door and I see the one next door here. So if I look at these two different ones, these are equivalent to each other, right? So here's the kicker. They are equivalent to each other. This one would be maybe the B signal and that would be a B signal. This would be the A signal. The A is furthest away from the electronegative atom. So those two are Bs. So what this means is that I do not treat them separately. Okay. So the one to the left and the one to the right, those are equivalent protons. So I add all of the equivalent protons up. There's two to the left and two to the right. So that's a total of four. And those four, I will then add one on, and that will be five. So we can call this a pentet or some people will actually call it a quintet, like quintuplets. The same thing would happen here. So uh, that is in reference to a total of five. If you didn't want to use either one of those words, you could just say a multiplet. I would give you credit for that. 
or what you would see on my types of questions, I would say, give me the multiplicity and I wouldn't even really require you to use words. I would just say, is the multiplicity a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, a seven, an eight, a nine, a 10, a 12, a 14, and so forth. You would just give me the number. That's kind of where I gravitate toward, but the textbook wants you to describe it using your words. So we'll use our words to describe it here and we'll call it a pentet or a quintet. Either one of those I will be okay with, all right? All right, so there's that example problem for C. So hopefully you got that one correct. If so, ding, ding, good for you. You're making strides in the NMR field. All right, so finally we get D, and D is ICH2CH2CH and BR2. So again, slightly different, and uh, we need to start off like we always have with the number of chemical shifts. So I, CH2, and then CH2, and then CH, and then BR. So again, very first thing, ding dong the molecule. So ding dong, I get a signal there and ding dong, I get a signal there because it's different. And then ding dong, I get a signal there as well because they're different. So all three of these carbons are different from each other. Notice this is very similar to the B example that we did with the exception of this last carbon near the bromine. This carbon only has a hydrogen here and that's it, uh, not two of them. So um, that would be the major difference between part B and part D. So there's two bromines here with one hydrogen, and that is it. All right, so I take a look at these three signals. I know there's going to be three chemical shifts. All right, so now I need to explain the multiplicity for each one of these. And we just do what we've always done before in the past. So here's my CH2 group. I see two mean kids and a mean mommy and a mean daddy, so, or a mean daddy. So I see a total of two plus one, which is going to be three. So this is going to be a triplet. And then here on the other end, this is not equivalent. It's not equivalent to anything, right? So that is its own signal. So we do treat that one separately and we need to report it. So it only has one neighbor and that is it. That's why I do these. They're typically the easiest. And there's two mean kids with that mean mommy or mean daddy in there. So there's going to be a total of three. Two plus one is three. And that will also be a triplet for that one. And then we see the middle carbon and that middle carbon is a CH2. So now what I'll do is that I'll do, 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 over here and I see two hydrogens that are there and then I do, 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 and then over here I see one hydrogen that is there. These are different signals so therefore we treat them separately. That is the key there, right? So if they're not the same, they do not have the same equivalent protons. And because of that, I treat them as their each own individual thing. So this is a 2 plus 1, which is a 3, and this is a 1 plus 1, which is a 2. So I'm going to take the 3 and the 2, and I multiply them because we're talking about multiplicity here, and that means 3 times 2 is going to be a 6. So this is going to split into 6 separate signals that we will see as far as multiplicity goes. However, the word that they would use here would be a multiplet. So they don't even describe six. We could use the term hexa if we wanted because that means six. But again, the textbook just really stops at four or five and it doesn't go any further than that as far as the different terms that we would use to explain the multiplicities here. All right. So there's one more topic that I want to cover after this example problem, and that is this thing called a doublet of doublets. So now I feel like I'm playing like a card game or a poker or something because we are talking about a double doublets. So I want you to think of two of a pair, right? We have a pair and then we have another pair in our hand of cards. We would call that a double of doublets. And there is something kind of special with doublet of doublets because it gives you an idea of what's happening within the molecule. So if you look here, this is a typical quartet, okay? And that quartet has a shape, and that shape starts off really little, and then it goes bigger, 
and then it goes little again on the tail end. And that's a typical, what I would call, quartet that I would see in an NMR. So that's very, very common, not an issue here at all, and that's just really what we've seen. And now we've talked about why the heights are different the way that they are. Because the probability of giving us all with or all against that signal uh, is going to be very, very small compared to all of the other options that I'm getting in the middles. And that's why those splitting peaks are much taller in the center of the entire shift that we are describing. However, we do have this thing called a double of doublets. And the double of doublets will still be four. Look at this. It's still four in total, right? One, two, three, four. But the difference is that the front end is higher and the back end is higher. And they're all pretty much the same height all the way across. And that is what we describe in an NMR field as a double of doublets. And what that means is it's giving you ideas on where the four is coming from, right? We've often talked about this in previous videos, and we're like, oh, that's a quartet. So that quartet means, well, four minus one is three. It's got to have three surrounding hydrogens, right, on that one carbon. Well, not necessarily because there's other options that are out there. And the other options could be two neighbors, each with its own number of hydrogens that kind of multiply together to give me a total of four or whatever the number is. So a doublet of doublets will give us an idea of the protons that surround that particular carbon and hydrogen cluster that I'm talking about or that I want to describe. So these splits are due to two non-equivalent adjacent protons. That's what we are after here. So we will see doublet of doublets beginning to get formed if I have neighbors and those neighbors have two non-equivalent adjacent protons. So I want to go now and maybe start looking at these examples and talk about how these doublet of doublets could show up and maybe how we can use them to describe or deduce a chemical structure once we run them. So here's an example of an NMR. And with this NMR, I see three major signals. At least that's what it looks like to me at first glance, right? So I see a major signal that's happening here, and then it looks like one that's here, and then it looks like one that is there. However, here's one of those examples where I tell you NMR is not 100% perfect every single time, because if you look at the structure, they've already labeled them for you. And there's actually five that's here. We have an A, B, C, D, and E. So if you look at this cluster really close, you'll actually see a separation here, and that would maybe make you think that there's two signals, and then one from there and one from there, which will be a total of four, and you would still be wrong. And the reason is because that cluster is actually made up of three, and they're super, super close with each other. So not double of the double, it's it. But we're looking at these NMRs and we're starting to take the baby steps in order to use the doublet of doublets in order to figure out where they show up and why they show up. So with the first signal, this is going to be our typical A. That has a neighbor with two, and that's a two plus one, which is a three. And if you look at this, you can kind of see that clearly. One, two, and three, that's going to be there. So the next one is the carbon with the H2. On one side, I have three hydrogens, so that's a three plus one, which is going to be a four. And then on the other side, here's a carbon and uh, this particular carbon, actually, if you look at it, uh, one, two, three, and four, there's four bonds there already that does not have any proton at all. So I don't really get a neighbor to the left here because there's no protons on that neighbor. It has no kids, right? It's in a, like a little retirement community where it's just a happy little man or a happy little woman, and they're on their own with no kids to worry about. So easy breezy there. So we only get a total of four from that splitting for that chemical shift. And what you see here is an enlarged version and that clearly shows the four splits that are happening there. So that's going to be a quartet for you as far as multiplicity goes. And then finally, this cluster here uh, after the seven mark, that is in reference to the C and the D and the E. 
And uh, each one of these has a, a carbon that's been attached. And on one side, we have a hydrogen. And on that side, we do not. So this is going to be a one hydrogen thing plus one, and that will be two. So that will be like a doublet there. And then when I move on to D, that will be a little bit different. This carbon to the left has one, so one plus one is two. And then this carbon to the right has one, so that's a one plus one, which is a two. And then two times two is a four. So that would be a quartet, actually, that's going to show up there. And then if I look at E, that is a para position. That will be a different signal. And if I look at E here, I go next door. I see one kid that's there. So one plus one is two. And then I go right-handed. And that's one plus one, which is two. However, this signal is the same as this signal. So the splitting will change very slightly here, right? Those are both ortho positions. That had not happened up until this point, okay? Meaning that with this C hydrogen to the left of that, that was meta. That is different. It gives us a different signal. Then if I looked at this hydrogen that was labeled as D, to the left of it was the para position, and to the right of it was the ortho position. So they are different signals, so I count them separately. Para, though, is going to be a little different if you're not careful. And that's because to the left is going to be the carbon next door, and to the right is a carbon next door. But these are in the same positions, and those are metas of each other. So those metas are equivalent which means that the hydrogen here and the hydrogen there should be counted together. So one plus one is going to be a total of two. And then I add one on that total. I do not treat them as separate entities here. So that means that this will be a triplet. So for E, I have a triplet. For D, I have a quartet. For C, I have a doublet. And then for the innard of the CH2 group here on the ethyl group, well, that's going to be a quartet. Well, yeah. And then A will be a triplet, just like we had another triplet later on in the structure. All right. So triplet, quartet, doublet, quartet, and then we see another triplet. All right. So that would be a description of the multiplicity for that particular molecule. All right, so here we have another NMR, and this time it's just focused on the benzene ring. Now we know OMP. We knew about OMP later. We just haven't seen it in a while. But we need to take a look at these structures, and uh, I see three major signals here, right? I see a major signal that's there, and a major signal that's here, and a major signal that is there. So three major signals is what I first glance at, and the structure actually tells me what those signals are. There's an A, and there's a B, and there's a C. So there are three major signals, and they've enlarged each one of these up. Uh, so uh, here's the 7.5 to 7.6. This would be the A, which is the lowest frequency. And then here's 7.6 to 7.8. So pretty close, but yet a different signal. So this would be B. And then here's the 8.1 to 8.3, a little further downfield. So therefore, that would be a C cluster. So if I look at the C cluster... Here we are, and I take a look at the neighbors. Well, I go next door to the left, and there's a carbon with one kid. So there's one proton there, and that is a different signal than the one on the right-hand side. So I'm automatically going to do a one plus one, which is a two. So we're going to start there at least. And then for C, over on the right-hand side, I see two bonds to another carbon, a bond to the carbon I just left from, and then another bond to an NO2 group. There is no proton here for that carbon. There's no H that's directly attached there. So there's going to be a zero that's going to be there. So a one plus one is going to be a two. And I see that the C signal has been split into a doublet that is there. All right, so there we go. There's the doublet. And then if I take a look at A, let's do A now. Here is the proton for A. And then I go to the left, and there is a 1. And I go to the right-hand side, and there is going to be a 1. 
So this looks like if I had to determine what was going on, well, to the left is going to be a 1 plus 1, and that is a 2. And then to the right-hand side, that is a different chemical signal, right? Because this is next door to an NO2 group, and this is two doors down. So that is a different signal. There's one that's there, so 1 plus 1 is another 2. And then 2 times 2, which is going to be a 4. All right, so if I take a look at A, what we're seeing is at least a split of four, and you're actually seeing this cluster here in three. That is a three cluster. The fourth one's not showing up that well, but we're going to see a total of four based on the rules that we've always used so far. And then for B, if I look at B, here we see a neighbor to the left and a neighbor to the right. And that neighbor to the left and neighbor to the right has one apiece. So one plus one is going to be a two. And then this one's also a one. But this is an equivalent, right? That is equivalent to that one. They are the same signal to each other. So this is actually a one plus one, which is two plus one more. And that will be a total of three. And the way that we see B here is that we see three separate peaks. So this is a triplet that shows up. So that's also wrong up here at the top. I did not change it from a previous example here. But that is the way that we would deduce this particular structure as far as chemical signals go. All right, so uh, now what I want to do is bring in three more example problems. And here's A, B, and C. And I want you to think about the way that these three things can be separated from each other. So take a stab at it. Look at the number of chemical shifts. Look at how they split. And see if the splitting and the number of chemical shifts are going to be exactly the same. And if not, that will be a way to distinguish the difference between these three structures from each other. So pause the video here or stop the video here. Take a stab at these three examples. And then in the next video, we'll pick up and we'll answer these questions and we'll see if you've got the correct answer on your end. And I've got faith in you. I know you're going to be able to do it. So don't sit there and grumble around and say, I can't do these example problems. I can't do the NMR. I can't do any of this stuff. Why do you have to make me suffer through all of this? The only thing I want to do is just take this class for something else. I'll never use this again. Well, it's easy. I promise it's easy. So just take a stab, figure out if you can do it or not, and then we'll come back and we'll double check your answers in the next video.